Now in this video guys we're gonna be putting together a gaming PC for 2019 step by step and we're gonna be doing this together and with that said yeah let's get into it. Hey how's it going guys it's Robin here on RBN Hardware bringing you the latest PC tech and hardware. I also do product reviews and I even test keyboards and mice once in a while and so if you're interested in that yeah definitely subscribe and don't forget to tap the notification bell so that you don't miss out whenever I upload another video. Also at any point during the video feel free to check out the links to each PC component that I'm using you can find all that information down below now first things first what do you need in order to get started here tools that should leave you satisfied includes a standard screwdriver with bit support uh, so that you can easily switch between let's say a flat and a Phillips screwdriver in different sizes very conveniently also a ESD protection is also a hot topic when it comes to PC assembly some people say you need it and others say it's unnecessary yes two cents did a pretty interesting video covering this a while ago where he came to the conclusion that it wasn't really necessary. I've lost track of the amount of PCs I've built over the years and I have uh, personally never used it and all these PCs are still, believe it or not, working. My server, for example, still working 10 years in and so if you need it or not, it's up to you, I guess. And yeah, that's pretty much wraps up all the tools and accessories you need here. So with that said, what components do you need? So you need a motherboard, you need RAM, you need a CPU, and you need a CPU cooler, you need some form of storage, you need a case and lastly you need a power supply and depending on what CPU you're gonna be using you might as well want a graphics card as well. With that said let's start with the build process. Now what I like to start with is to simply get the case ready by taking and getting rid of the side panels of each side to make it easier later when it's time to install the various components. Now what I like to start with is the motherboard and installing the CPU in its socket. Now the CPU socket can look a little bit different if you're going for an Intel CPU or if you're going with an AMD for example. On a motherboard from Intel you usually find a plastic cover here. This is however a B450 motherboard and this is for the AMD Ryzen CPU lineup and for this socket the way the socket is made a plastic cover is simply not needed here. Now regardless if you're going with an Intel or an AMD setup. If you take a greater look at the socket you will notice that there is an arrow in either side of the corners in the plastic socket. You will notice that this exact arrow can be found on the CPU as well and this is the way you want to match up the CPU and the socket. You want them to match basically. On one side of the socket you will find a small metallic arm and this is the locking mechanism that will secure the CPU and its socket. When and it's mounted and by default this is in locked mode so before we rip out the processor what you want to do first is you want to open up the socket because right now the socket is basically locked. Keep in mind be very careful here as both the socket and the CPU can have many many pins that can easily be bent and trust me guys you don't want to bend any pins as warranty typically don't cover this sort of accident. And with that said let's bring out the CPU and as always be careful here as you don't wanna accidentally drop it. Align the CPU over the socket with the matching arrow matching up the right corner of the socket and the CPU and simply just let it slide in and no force is needed here. Once in place carefully pull the metallic arm back in its starting position again and you have successfully installed the CPU. Now it's time to install the memory or the RAM modules. Now I'm using an ATX motherboard which is the most common size measure right now. Standard on an ATX board is 4 DIMM slots in total and they can be found on the right side of the CPU socket. For this build I'm gonna be using two RAM modules and before we just stick them in in any of the free slots there are two things you want to have in mind before you proceed here. First you want to look up the name on each slot. Typically you find that the DIMM slots are named 
in the following order. We got Dim A1, Dim A2, Dim B1 and Dim B2. The way that the CPU and the motherboard work, you want to mount the sticks so that they populate and operate in the same type of channel for the best experience. Typically for two RAM sticks, you wanna put them in A2 and B2 for them to properly work in the same channel. Now this information can be found in the manual that came with your motherboard guys. So I highly recommend that you look this up before installing them. Now before installing the modules, you wanna make sure that the cutout on the memory stick matches up the small peg in the socket. Simply open up the securing or locking mechanism on each side and slide down the RAM sticks. Now some slight amount of force is needed here to secure the modules in its socket. Repeat the process one more time and you have successfully installed the system memory. Now time to install the CPU cooler and in this case we have a cooler that came boxed or included with the CPU and if this is the first time you install in the cooler it will come pre applied with thermal paste on the sink for convenient installation. In our case however I've been using this cooler in many different builds so I have to install thermal compound here as well. Typically this is something you don't have to do if you're not using a third party cooler for your build. In that case I recommend watching my video where I demonstrate how to install a third party cooler, how thermal paste work and how much you need. You can find that video down below. Anyway this this motherboard comes with two small plastic brackets covering up the mounting holes for the CPU cooler. So you want to start off by taking these two off. Usually you need a standard Phillips screwdriver here. For this build we're gonna be using the included Wrath Spire cooler from AMD. And the way the cooler is made and how the holes align, the cooler can be installed in two ways. Which way you decide to install it is entirely up to you. Simply align the cooler so that the four screws matches up the holes and use a Phillips screwdriver to install it. Now what I like to do is I simply turn each screw enough so that I feel that they have the proper contact with the hole and I keep turning each screw like a pattern like this until they are completely secure and yeah when you notice that you cannot go any further you want to stop. Now once done it's time to connect the CPU fan to the CPU fan header on your motherboard. Again this text can be found printer on your motherboard PCB but if you cannot find it simply have a look in the manual again. Once you have found the CPU fan header you have successfully installed the CPU cooler. By the way I almost forgot the part of the installing process of the M2 SSD drive so let's do that now before we actually put the motherboard inside the case because you definitely don't want to work inside if you can avoid it. So uh, in our case we got two spots where we can install our M2 SSD and this vary from motherboard so I definitely suggest you guys to have a look at your motherboard manual for details where you install yours. The M2 SSD comes in a wide range of different sizes and in our case we got this type of model. Once you have figured out where you should install yours a screw and a distance should come with your motherboard that lets you install the M2 to drive and you're gonna need this. Usually what you need is a Phillips screwdriver here to uh, install it and what you want to do first is you want to simply install the distance in the hole in the motherboard. Once you got this in place you want to install the drive in a 30 degree angle and gently just gently slide it in. Typically you have to wiggle it a bit for it to get past the friction and to reach the connector basically. When it's all the way in it will be sitting at a 30 degree angle angle and it will be sitting like this until you screw it in. So simply take the screw and line it up with the hole as you push it down gently and once the M2 drive is installed it will be flat against the motherboard again. Lightly tighten guys you will feel when it's all the way in and yeah guys that's it. 
hope next up what i like to do is to install the io shield typically this shield comes in the same box as the motherboard now for the asus Trix b450 board i got with us today guys this shield is already pre-installed but if yours is not you want to take a look at your motherboard and figure out which way this shield should be facing typically what i like to look at is the audio jack for as long as i can remember the audio jack connectors has always been placed at the bottom of the motherboard so you want to take the io shield and install it from the inside of your case you want to put a little bit of force on each corner of the shield and you will feel a distinct clicking sound when it's in place and that's how easy it is to install the io shield time to install the motherboard to the case and before we do that you need to install the motherboard fittings these fittings either comes in a plastic bag along with your case and looks something like this or they can also come pre-installed and many case makers in this day and age have these fittings pre-installed already as for the case that i'm using today otherwise simply look up how you install them to your specific case because it may vary a little in nine times out of ten you will find a total of nine mounting holes on your motherboard and this means that there should be at least nine holes in your case as well now in many cases you will find that your case has a peg sticking up in the middle and this is simply to hold the motherboard in place to make the installation a little bit easier and what i like to recommend is to try and slide it in as i'm showing in the video with the io connectors sliding in into the io shield first and yeah make sure that all the connectors and port matches up correctly with the holes on the io shield this can be a bit tricky guys so please take your time here now finding the right type of screw for the motherboard can be a challenge sometimes since they come delivered in a plastic bag and every bag look pretty much the same i recommend once again having a look at the manual that came with your case which screw to use here so that you don't end up taking the wrong screw meant for the uh, let's say the ssd simply install the eight or the nine screws depending on if you have that peg that i was talking about a little bit earlier now after the motherboard has been completely secured what i like to do next is to installing the various cords and cables for the front io in our case for example we got two usb 3 we got front audio and a power switch as well as lightning for the power switch and lightning for the hard drive activity and all these cables need to be connected to the motherboard now the front panel connector can look a little bit different in our particular case it's just a single one connector but this one can look something like this as well anyway i always recommend having the motherboard manual near if you find any of this confusing where do you connect this to in nine times out of ten you will find these headers for the front power and buttons on the lower right hand side corner of the motherboard next up we got the dual usb 3 front connectors this cable is usually the thickest of them and all in all it's very easy to recognize this one because it's the biggest and bulkiest again depending on what motherboard you have the header for this one can usually be found on either at the bottom of the motherboard or on the right hand side again i recommend having a peek in the manual if you're unable to find it lastly we got an additional usb for the uh, smart hub in this case and this one can be found at the bottom of our case and as for any header you can tell what this header is for by the text that is printed on the pcb right next to it this one can only be installed in one way as the other ones are simply blocked finally we got the front audio and this cable looked pretty much the same as the usb 2 and in this case this header can be found right next to the usb 1 on the motherboard make sure you match up each pin with each hole and simply press it in now we have come to the point when it's time to install the storage if you have an ssd you want to be using the included sata cable that comes with your motherboard and connect it to any of the free sata ports on your motherboard and you want to mount your ssd on any of the free 2.5 inch cages in your case all right now we have reached the point where it's time to install the power supply unit and this is just general tips guys for any pc build for 2019 i actually highly recommend going with the power supply that is fully modular. 
simply meaning that all the cables comes in a bag on the side and you essentially only connect as many cables as you really need for your specific build and this will essentially vastly reduce the amount of cables in your case and simply just less headache in general when it comes to cable management later on so we're going to start off with the main 24 pin connector for the motherboard many times you need an additional or most likely you gotta need the additional 4 pin or 8 pin connector and this one is for the cpu what other cables are we going to need here well most likely you're gonna have a graphics card as well and so for that you're gonna need a pcie cable Cable. and lastly but definitely not least for storage you're gonna need a SATA power cable as well and yeah that's pretty much it with all the cables being installed to the power supply it's time to install it and as for this case we got with us today you install the power supply at the bottom and this is getting more and more common nowadays with the fan preferably facing down so it can suck fresh air from the outside for a best case scenario now we got a total of four screws to secure the power supply which you typically find in a plastic bag in the same box the power supply came in you usually typically find these screws with your case as well now time for the cable wiring and typically you want to start with the biggest and bulkiest cable first and simply work down from there so let's just start with the 24 pin for the motherboard and deal with the CPU cpu one followed by the one for the graphics card and lastly we got the sata power the cable for powering the storage or if you have any sort of smart hub that needs powering as in our case now if you're thinking of getting a new case i highly recommend the h500 from nzxt for many reasons but what i like in particular is how easy the cable management is in this case so i definitely recommend that if you're on the hunt for a new one anyway on the other side of the enclosure you typically find smart cutouts and holes where you conveniently can wire your cables through and typically these holes are placed so that they match up where you find the ports to connect them to in our case we find these holes in these locations so first let's start with the 8 pin cable for the cpu usually you find this port on the upper left hand side of the motherboard so you want to drag this all the way up to the right side corner of the case the uh, 24 pin cable usually plugs in at the very middle left side of the motherboard and lastly we got the cable that will feed power to the graphics card and you typically want to wire this through the same hole or the hole underneath the cutout we just used for the 24 pin cable now when this is all done what is left to do is to connect this cable to where they belong including the SATA power for the storage and after this all you got left to do is to install the graphics card so what you want to do first is you want to make sure you have enough space and clearance and sometimes you might have to get rid of a hard drive cage but as you can see for us we got plenty of clearance so this won't be a problem you mount the graphics card in the highest available pcie slot and before we put it in we need to toss out the two pcie slots covering up the slots for the graphics card and both Boom, just slide it in and you should hear a clicking sound and you will feel when it's all the way in and again guys not a lot of force is needed here put the screws back in to secure the graphics card and what's left is to connect the cables for the graphics card and before you start working with the cable management and fixing everything up you want to fire up the system first to find out if everything is actually working and in our case it seems like everything is working so all i have to do now is to fix the cable management a bit and we're gonna be ready to jump online and pretty much start fragging and yeah guys that's it if you made it all the way here congrats you are a true soldier as always you can find all the parts down below a uh, pc parts that i used for this particular build this pc is actually part of a project for a friend of mine he needed a new computer so i decided to build it for him now i'm gonna be back with a brand new video for you guys in just a day in the meantime i would love to hear what pc or slapping together yourself so please share your pc specs down below until tomorrow have an awesome day all right bye